Uh, yeah, so, hi, I'm Nathan. I'm here to talk to you about the future of operating systems. I didn't have the chance to finish my slides and I woke up late this morning, so I don't actually remember my slides, so this is going to be fun. <laughs> uh, right, I reinvent wheels because I think we could use some better ones. Uh, so I'm working on a kernel and that's a research project and some guy on the, inter on the internet did that too, he also, he seems to have gotten somewhere. So I'm hoping that works out. <laughs> uh, so, a primer about kernels. <coughs> if you're running Linux or Mac OS or some other funky thing, you're probably looking at so using something like the thing on the left. So a lot of your stuff runs in kernel mode and ring zero where everything has to be absolutely perfect. If anything crashes, you're screwed and you get a kernel panic and life is terrible and you will throw your computer at the wall. <laughs> and some guy had opinions on this. and argued with the other guy. So we had a situation like this where like, if you want to write the kernel module, the code has to be perfect. And you kind of have to poke it into the kernel. You can't just run it separately. You can't build modules of your own. If you have a new idea on how things should work, well, you're, you can kind of shove it. And like, if you want to do something that's within the framework of what your kernel provides, then you're fine and everything's easy, way easier than if you were using a more modular system. But because there's a cost to modularity, but we decided that wasn't worth it. We picked something with a small core, that's why we're all here. And we picked, came up with a way to manage modularity. And I run out of slides here. But uh, so actually, I need this slide. Uh, some people figured out that there might be a better way to do this and came up with microkernels in the middle. You separate these things, you make. <coughs> You move a lot of things into user space where they run as normal processes. They can crash. Like your file system can crash. Now your file system doesn't work. That's rather annoying. Maybe your network driver crashes. You now have no network. But your system's still running and it can restart these things. And everything will be better again. Uh, so in the early 90s, I think, this was a really popular idea. And nobody really actually made uh, popular implementations of it. So, because it turns out it's way easier to write everything as one big bunch of code. And I think in part that is because if you look at the microkernels we already have, some of them like, they have still for something that should be very simple, they have very large API surface, they're complicated to talk to, so nobody actually wants to write the modules. And so some of them are slightly more practical. There's Minix, which is written by Andrew Tannenbaum, who who gives computer science and operating systems design at a university. He retired recently. But that's a, that's a research operating system. Nobody uses it seriously. And it doesn't go far enough, in my opinion. It makes in preconceived notions like how a file system works, how a file system should work, how a network works. And I want to pull out all these bits. So we go down to things like L4, which is a really, really fast research microkernel that actually has some traction. It's used in some niche applications.
but it still has a very large and complex API. I have no clue how to program for it. And I started writing my own thing. I decided that C wasn't good enough. It needed to be a safe systems language. So I went for Rust, where you can write a kernel with, a, so in Rust you have unsafe blocks where you can do all the crazy things you can do in C, like the reference null pointers and do pointer arithmetic and do stupid things. And those need to be perfect. But if you can isolate the unsafety to those blocks <coughs> and you can build safe abstractions around the tricky stuff, you can start right you can write a kernel without actually knowing that much. It becomes much, much easier to reason about. And and with that, I'm trying to build a kernel that provides the absolute minimum. You get processes which have their own memory spaces. So you can't poke into under other people's memory as usual. Uh, they can map memory to each other so they can share memory. Your programs do this pretty much all the time. This is why your graphics aren't uber slow because everything's being copied every frame, stuff like that. And they get channels to communicate with each other. Uh, some of you are probably familiar with Go's channels. And the basic approach is not only modularity, like NPM style, also separate your modules in to their own runtime spaces, so you're getting more of an Erlang style thing or microservices. And the moment you have something like that, you can you're operating like your kernel provides no preconceived notion of how an operating system should work. So if you want to if you want a file system, that's cool. You can do that. I think file systems are just terrible databases. I'm not going to have one. If you want to have TCP/IP or X25 or carrier pigeons, write a thing for it. I'm not too interested. I want crazy anarchist decentralized networking protocols. And I can build that because the, my operating system no longer has a preconceived notion of how that stuff should work. And let's see what's fun to. Okay, so if you, if nobody, if the, the operating system provides no preconceived notions of th how things should work, what you start having is. The things that are compatible are just the things that talk to the same interfaces. Rust has a nice mechanism for defining interfaces. Unfortunately, I don't have a slide for that. But you, any set of things is interoperable, interoperable if they agree. And that's pretty powerful. That's how NPM works. We all agree like on something like callback last, and everything works together for that. Or we all agree on function resrec for our HTTP servers, and everything works together for that. And we see people innovating with these. Like, we all use resrec and next now for our middleware. That's already like taking that and just everyone agreeing that that's a good idea. We'll stick with it. And. That means you can write much, much smaller modules because you just need an, in, an input interface that's agreed on and an output interface that's agreed on. And that means I can write a thing that just figures out how to place blocks on the disk. It's the minimal basis you need for a file system, but also for a database. So you can have your file system, and it can work on the same disk sharing space with the database. But 
the database no longer is forced to be layered onto the file system, which I find a terrible thing. Uh, yeah, I didn't actually pre prepare well for this, so. Uh, questions, at, questions at the end. Sorry, okay. questions at, just at, in, in person. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure where to go from here. Uh, most, um, <laughs> yeah. The name yeah. Of what you care about other people who get from Right. Uh, so, my kernel's called sulfur because it's a terrible chemistry joke. But, uh, it's not public right now because the code is kind of terrible and it doesn't do much. It, right now it pretty much... Like, it doesn't even write to the screen right now because I'm hacking on the paging code and hardware sucks. So right now it writes to the serial port and that's it. <laughs> Can it work with notepads? Uh, yeah, totally. You can write notebooks in an environment where you have literally no systems libraries or memory allocation. <laughs> 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 Writing memory allocators is actually hard. <laughs> uh, right, so what you, one of, like, Substack talked about Mad science at no conf EU. I don't know how many of you have seen the talk. Basically, like, mad science is what we do in Node where we make small modules, small packets of functionality that aren't prescriptive, that can be recombined in new and surprising ways, and that is mad science. Making new and crazy things, combining modules, pieces of functionality in ways you'd never the authors had never envisioned before because this modularity allows for it. So I'm hoping people will come up with some new crazy way of how operating systems will work. And I'm just trying to provide the base for them. I'll write my own operating system on top of it because I might as well if I have a kernel that allows me to do that easily. But I think everyone should come along and mix up their own operating system and figure out how their computer should work for them. And that's pretty much it. <laughs>